On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, installing the stage display in ProPresenter 5. Hi and welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week we talk about using different software in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford and I'm your host. I'd love for you to ask your questions, by the way. In fact, uh, today's subject is uh, the result of a lot of questions. A lot of people were asking just how you go about installing the stage display. So I'm happy to show you. So without further ado, Let's head on over to ProPresenter 5. In this tutorial, we'll look at how to configure and implement a confidence monitor, or what Renewed Vision calls a stage display. You should know before we get started that if you're looking for the same information that's on the main output, output which you'd normally send to a projector, the stage display isn't for you. This is a special display which is configured to help people on stage at church with information that only they need in a way that's best for them. If you need an exact copy of the main display, I recommend splitting the signal at the source computer using a piece of equipment called a distribution amplifier and sending a duplicate of the signal to your confidence monitor. This technique is especially useful if your church uses a lot of video elements in lieu of traditional text lyrics. Additionally, if you need both videos and the special features of the stage display, I encourage you to either switch between main display and stage display on your confidence monitor, or have both. Why you need a stage display. No more forgotten or out of order songs. You'll help singers remember lyrics. Help people on stage know what's coming next. Communicate important messages so that your service flows without interruption. The stage display is perhaps one of the most requested features in ProPresenter. Unfortunately, for many, how to set it up isn't immediately obvious. This tutorial will guide you through the setup and configure of the stage display and how to use it. First, what hardware do I need? Perhaps none. Some Macs already come with enough video outs to do what you need. For others, you'll need to buy an inexpensive video card. The one that I ordered from Amazon and used with my mid-2010 MacBook Pro is shown here. The Diamond Multimedia USB External Video Display Adapter Display Link, DL165. If you're using any of the Macs I'm about to list, you won't need that. Basically, that's any Macintosh that can have three displays, including a built-in display and the ability to connect to external displays. As of January 2015, Here's the list according to this website, support.apple.com slash en dash us slash ht204154. These are the MacBook Pro Retina 13 inch late 2012 and later. The MacBook Pro Retina mid-2012 and later. MacBook Pro 13-inch mid-2012. MacBook Pro 15 and 17-inch early 2011 and later. MacBook Air mid-2011 and later. iMac late 2012. iMac mid-2011. iMac late 2013. iMac... <coughs> 21.5 inch mid 2014, 
the Mac Mini late 2012, the iMac 5K 27 inch late 2014, the Mac Mini late 2014, the Mac Mini mid 2011 2.5 gigahertz. And actually, these two Mac Minis, the late 2014 and the late 2012, both have one important limitation, and that is that they can only do two display outs, but you actually need a third. So I should have not listed those as well. Steps to install the USB adapter if you need one. Number one, make sure you get the appropriate adapter for your system. If your stage display takes VGA, make sure you get an adapter that supports it. If it takes DVI, get one that supports DVI. If it takes HDMI or SDI, get an adapter for that. While it's possible to convert one to the other, if you buy the right adapter, you may not need to. The adapter I mentioned earlier, the Diamond Multimedia USB to DVI adapter BVU165LT, also came with the appropriate adapters to use with VGA and HDMI signals. Double check the instructions that came with the adapter and make sure they don't differ from the instructions on mine. Follow the instructions with your adapter if they do. Number three, before you plug the unit into the USB port on your Mac, install the driver. For the one that I've listed, you need to go here displaylink.com slash support slash mac underscore downloads dot php. Start by downloading the driver from the displaylink site. Depending on how you have your mac set up, it may automatically mount to the desktop. If it doesn't, just double click the DMG file and mount it. Inside the file that's created by mounting inside the drive that's created by mounting the file, you should find an icon for the Display Link Software Installer PKG. Double click it. Depending on the security settings of your Mac, you may be prompted to enter an administrator password or you may not be able to install the software at all. Don't worry, this is easy to fix. In order to do that, go to System Preferences, which may be on your dock, or you may need to go to Apple, system preferences to launch that. If the installation proceeds, you can skip this part of the setup, but you'll need to go to security and privacy, and in the bottom half of the window, it should say allow, allow apps downloaded from. If you have Mac App Store selected, it won't let you install it. Mac App Store and identified developers, it should, and anywhere it should. So if either of these bottom two choices are selected, you should be fine. If it's just the top, you'll probably have a button over to this side that says install anywhere. Anyway, so you need to click that. You can also click this lock down here in the lower left hand corner type in your administrator username and password to change this permanently. You'll notice that mine is set to Mac App Store and Identified Developers, which gives you a good balance from the security of Mac App Store only and the freedom of anywhere. Once you've done that, complete the installation. After you've completed the driver installation in step 3, you will probably be prompted to restart your Mac. Do so. Now once that's completed, you'll be, um, you need to go back to System Preferences, click on this button up here if you're not already at everything. 
and then click on Displays. And then on Arrangement, you should see three rectangles. If you don't, first make sure Mirror Displays, here in the lower left hand corner, is unchecked. If it's not, uncheck it. If you still don't see three rectangles, unplug the USB adapter. The screen should flash and one of the rectangles should disappear from the arrangement window. If that doesn't happen, something is wrong with the adapter, the USB cable, the computer, or the driver. And you need to contact tech support for the adapter or Apple to continue. ProPresenter will not be able to see and use the third display as a stage display if System Preferences doesn't see the adapter as a third display. So until you get that sorted out, none of the rest of the st steps will work. Figure that out before you go any further. If you do see all three rectangles, as I'm showing here, take some time to arrange them so that they mimic the placement of the displays in real life. If, as is the case with my system, they're each similar resolutions, mine are 1280 by 700, 1280 by 800, and 1280 by 720, it might be obvious which is which. It might not be obvious which is which. Apple has provided a little help here. As you click on the box, a border will show up on that display. You'll also notice that one of the boxes has a little white bar above it. That's the display that is built into the iMac or MacBook. It's also the display that has the control screen from ProPresenter. That should help you narrow down which is which even more. You should also be able to disconnect each external display at the computer and that will and it will disappear from the screen. In this example, I've placed one of the displays above the one in the middle and the other to the right of the main one. This might be a great way to display the displays if the main display is to the front of the tech booth where the computer is located and the stage display is to the right. Now let's open up ProPresenter. Once you open up ProPresenter, go to the ProPresenter 5 menu in the, main, in the menu and click on Preferences. Then click on Displays in the window that opens, this one here, which was already open in this case. You should still see your three displays. Each should be in the same place. There's one key difference. One of the boxes will say SD, one will be blank, and one will say out. They're probably assigned to the wrong displays though. This is one of the final pieces of the puzzle. Click and drag SD to the box that represents the display you're using as the stage display. Drag out to the projector display, unless it's there already. The control screen should be blank. Now just check the enable stage display checkbox and you should see the stage display on the display you've selected. If you don't, try moving the boxes around. By the way, the configure stage display op, uh, button only arranges information on the stage display. But that's another lesson. Well, I hope that helped you.
there were a lot of questions about just how you go about installing it. And while I didn't show you the installation and the driver, that should be pretty straightforward. But if that's something you need help with, I'm happy to show you that as well. That is basically all there is to it. And you'll notice towards the end, that's the part that most people miss. You either don't get the hardware right or you don't get that last little piece at the end. So I hope it helped. If you like this content, don't hesitate to subscribe to the newsletter. And I've got a little special bonus for you. I created a step-by-step -step guide for this particular video. That's actually what I was uh, going off of. And I'd love to send that to you along with a direct link to the video. As long as you'll do a couple of things for me. First, subscribe to the newsletter so that we can keep in touch and uh, I can help you out with more ProPresenter stuff. But also, I need some feedback on this because I want to make it as good as it can be. I'm hoping to make a ProPresenter class that is based on this kind of format. So I'd love some feedback as well. So go ahead and head on over to the normal address, trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and you can go ahead and get a copy of the PDF with all the screenshots and everything and step-by-step -step instructions on installing this, along with a direct link to the video. So I hope that helps you. And until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with Trinity Digital Media. Dot com.